nice no leash because shaco boxes yeah they walk through rivers so there's not much there gotta respect the halo blades but yeah playing for the first two push oh, one thing to consider is versus pokey lanes i almost always opt for longsword three pot i feel like the ash is like pretty long range and got the volleys and the, the three pot really helps you out with uh not only the the potions but uh getting, getting your first item faster too okay that makes sense yeah so my, my rule of thumb is doran's blade versus all in lanes and longsword versus poke lanes okay i've been trying oh i i completely agree with my leveling up the e <laughs> uh like i got i got level two and didn't level e but um but yeah uh just i, I yeah i was thinking doran's because of like Triss going in all, all in level two, but then mm -hmm. yeah, I wasn't sure which one would be better. Yeah, she shouldn't really get those angles. This is kind of given. Like, uh, first off, like as soon as you're chunked out to like say minus two hundred HP right now, it's good to pop yeah. your potion and like just close to immediately and try to get topped up because it gives it all in threat. And then they shouldn't have got this angle here where she gets to hit the WE on you. Like you kind of uh, just lost track of the threats there, and you hit two at a slightly late, but it was it was close enough. So, but the, the reaction wasn't there too. And if you think like at this point right here, if Trist was playing like up here, like you, you'd, ha you'd have to like, you, you would have to back off the wave already because they, they already have two first. So and there's no shame in like starting to see, okay, they're two first. Let's start to back up a little bit. Maybe I can still get this minion. And in this case, because she's back here, you're totally fine. Um, but she had time to gap close and even get to you. But like right here, this is really scary where she could even try to like flash trade or... I can see that you're going for this minion and it's all good, but as soon as you get that, you gotta realize, okay, shit, like I, I, I gotta be really careful here. Gotcha. Just, uh, I think if you wanna go even a step further back, I think right here is where the, like if you could have gotten this movement here where you're kind of walking towards Ash and getting chunked out, um, really sets this up too. So you were like over a little tunnel vision on the minions and kind of losing track of threats here. And I, Halo Blades Ash is kind of new, so it's understandable if you're not used to playing against it, but the the one, two, three autos is something she's always gonna go for at the start of the lane, because she's got Halo Blades. It's like really potent in like a quick trade because she's volley plus three autos is like over 200 damage at level one and not many things gotcha. can out trade it. So just knowing that now you, you can see, okay, Halo Blades Ash, like, or Halo Blades any champion really, that's just kind of a Halo Blades thing where it's like, okay, they're gonna wanna walk up and get their burst of autos and then they back up and they wait for it to come back on cooldown and then they do it again rinse and repeat so it's just something to look out like she's got her hail blades back up now you can see the little animation popped up and you, you know that she's probably going to go for another round of autos but in this case they're kind of pushing for two first gotcha i mean that, that plays out they, they jump you here just didn't get out in time it's kind of hard to live through that once she kind of connects already and they flash for it and that's it it's comebackable it's no big deal but definitely not starting your lane off on the right foot. Like it's a, it's especially on Ezreal. It's like a, you just need to be getting your, staying on curve as much as possible, be, until you hit like your mid game core, because his like, I mean he can fight, but he's so much about his mid game spike that, any delays from there will severely hinder your ability to carry the game, because it's all about okay. hitting like, even just Essence Revert or. Man, I mean, Triforce or like any of those spikes are just so massive where you can just like hard carry the game that I'm um, trying to reduce variance in the early game and make sure you hit those items is pretty key. So here I would say um, focus on getting the minions over trying to trade with them because you know they want to recall. So the thing right here about this damage is it doesn't stick. Like un unless you think that you can legitimately have a chance of killing them like with like a pretty high conviction, like these minions are more important because you know they're gonna base, so they're gonna heal back to full. And these, if you don't get the minions now, like they're they're infinitely gone. So it's um like the the damage is temporary, but the gold is forever. And right. you gotta prioritize. Like AD carry is like so much about economy. Like it's I mean every role is to some extent, but like AD carry is the most gold hungry role because you're sharing experience and you're heavily reliant on your items. So so much about AD carry is about optimizing your your income. And making sure that like you're staying on curve because like the, the way compounding works you know if like if you if you interrupt compounding in the beginning then you don't have nearly the same outcome in the later stages of the game so like it, sometimes it could be like oh it's just one cs there two cs there 
but it, it starts to add up so quickly that it becomes the difference of you hitting breakpoints or not. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so in the early game as an AD carry, your your focus should be like um, just setting a strong foundation for being able to take over the mid game. Because unless you're playing like a super lane bully champion, then in which case you can maybe put some more priority onto it. Okay, nice traded the kills there. Should probably get her. Good flash. Ah, oh, that's decent. I mean, trade of kills. I mean, it kind of plays into like the waves. Okay, she hit the root. Goodness, that's awesome. But uh, you don't want to be too reliant on situations where um, it's like needing your teammates to execute the trade kills and all that kind of stuff. Because like right now, um, the kills are not worth if you just slow down the... If you hypothetically just caught these minions under turret, they based, and you pushed out this whole next wave, that would probably be a better scenario than the trade kills with the awkward half wave and uh, not getting any XP or farm in the meanwhile. Gotcha. Like, I think like this whole next wave and these three minions right here are probably worth about the same amount as the kill itself. And uh, it relies on your support, like executing it too. Like part of it is when you're climbing solo queue, like you have to try to minimize reliance on others as much as possible if you want consistency because you'll have some good supports some games some games you'll have bad supports but the one thing you can always do is make sure that you're hitting your mid game items at a reasonable time and then when the lane phase is over supports get outscaled and they won't matter anyway but that's one thing that some people don't fully internalize that is important to comprehend is like how much the power support has early compared to how much power ad carry has early it's like the support yeah. is like raising the ad carry and AD carries are weak, but then as the game goes on, the AD carry gets stronger and stronger. So you want to just try to be happy when your support is making proactive plays and like landing spells and play off that as much as possible. But don't overforce and try to make sure that you're getting like a consistent uptime. Like because the okay. wa the waves are like the the beat of the game, and if you're if you're if you're not able to stay on the waves consistently because of scrappy fights. That, that benefits the supports more than the AD carries because the supports like the scrappy low economy game, but AD carries are all about the farm and scaling up. So you want the ball in your hand. Okay, that makes so much sense. Um, yeah, I think that... Yeah, like my general approach so far has been to like... If I'm if I play aggressive and then like dodge the Nautilus hook or something like that, then that will allow my support to have an angle to go in. But yeah, if I just kind of play more off of it, if they're able to if they're able to do something, then it'll be it'll be less coin flip than like because then I'll get I'll get hit in a lot of the cases by that Nautilus hook or whatever, so it's not even worth. Yeah, totally. And the thing that happens that a lot of the time is um say say you're not the one trying to bait out the Nautilus hook. Say your support walks up and tanks the Nautilus hook, but gets their combo down. There's a world where like your support dies and you kill the enemy support and you're still farming. No big deal. You traded kills. You got an extra kill gold, but you're still farming. So it's like it's an added bonus. Whereas if you're the one going in first and then you die, then that's a whole death timer and walking back to lane where you're not getting any farmer experience, which is much more punishing for the AD carry than for the support. So it's like it's I sometimes I'm chill if my support just trades his life because i'm like okay i gotta kill they gotta kill too but I'm, uh, like at least i'm accelerating so i'm not gonna get solo killed by their jungler in like the mid game you know because i'm i'm ramping up and uh it also a lot of times what happened is if you're not giving the enemy angles a lot of people don't know how to play the game other than fight so right. what happens is they'll get over eager and then they'll give you a freebie because they're trying to force a play that's pretty solid and i like the 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 pings for help when the wave was in a bad spot for your enemy that's pretty heads up because they're super gankable on this you got the pink warden try they have to step up for the wave like this is this is really heads up and uh it gives you some nice momentum back into the game thanks yeah, and see how she how you were playing nice and back there so she jumps your support instead so you get to keep free hitting her that kind of plays onto the theme we were just talking about where you, you were patient with it and then you went when the, the opportunity presented itself instead of trying to force it too soon. Yeah, and if, uh, if you're ever scared of, like a Nunu is just an Ezreal thing or a lot of champions, just hug the wall side when you're farming. I mean, you kind of are right now, but just as a reminder, because 
if you're you gotta always have a quick out with the shift so he's pretty safe getting these waves crashed by himself like the fat wall yeah just anywhere okay. anywhere where he it'll interrupt the line of fire of his snowball you just have an out path gotcha yeah that was kind of uh i i, I think i sort of do this a lot or like I'll stay bot because like my, 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 my team starts dragging and then I'll stay bot because like if it's like, I have this idea that if the pit, if the pit is not warded, then if I'm like, if I'm on vision pushing bot, then they'll have less of an idea that they're doing dragon. And then True. it just ends up that they get collapsed anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So you got to play it on a case by case basis. Um, and in this instance, you need to crash the wave like that that you're unless it's like super super urgent like that needs to go right now like your wave is are almost always the priority because if you base on a bad wave like it, it's not just that wave but it's the next wave that dies off and then you're walking to lane in an unsafe place and like most of the time the, the wave should be the priority and the dragon should be extra like if you can't do the wave and the dragon then the drag is like an over pull and in this instance getting the wave crash and then moving up like this is fine i think where it goes a little awry is at this point i would be okay with like just getting out after the dragon is secured or forcing this guy and then backing up but once you see like the new new rolls in you see trist on bot wave it's like making this fight go long is is just kind of a bait and then they got the trist rotates they got the plant like this whole sequence i feel like trist could have focused you and killed you here maybe she ended up going for shaco instead but like regardless this whole sequence of you, you want the dragon you got the dragon everything else is like it's just monkey business and your priority okay. should be the base because I could tell your priority was the wave in the base. And, but then the, you got the wave crashed and then you're like, oh, I kind of want to help this guy with dragon. And and you did. You, you walked over. It got secured. All is well. But then after that, this is like a kind of like a I like to call these a squirrel play where it's like, like a dog sees a squirrel and starts chasing after it. Uh, so this is like what I'd call a squirrel play where it's like, OK, you just see that your team just sees them in river and they don't have a clear plan. So they're just chasing after the squirrel instead of sticking to the game plan, which would be like, okay. get the objective, get out. And because this gets really okay. close right here and uh, too close for comfort, really, when you want to be getting your buy off. Because that that's it, that situation was so great for you guys where you, you got the double kill bot. Or no, you didn't get both the kills, but both of them died. And then you got the wave crash. And then you guys managed to secure the dragon. And you just need to get back ASAP. Because I think because this play went long, you're, you're going to miss the whole next wave, or at least most of it to where it's almost like uh it's not really worth it for you compared to as if you were able to, if you just imagine you just based immediately caught this whole wave which is like 10 yeah. cs that's like almost a kill worth of gold and even if your your jungle like died on dragon or whatever like i mean it's it's obviously not good like you're not trying to like troll him but as somebody is it's like as a solo q mentality you always want to put yourself first and if you know like okay i'm gonna miss a massive wave by basing too late here I don't care about what this guy's doing. Let him, let him, if he, if he can secure the dragon by himself, then good for him. If, if he gets killed, like, yo, that was a bad pull then. <laughs> so it's okay. like that makes sense. 80 carry. You have to be such a selfish player. It's just the fact of the matter. It's like, if you, if you don't want to be selfish, there's other roles that can facilitate it better or even other champions that can facilitate it better. Cause Ezreal is like an extremely like carry champion. You know, he's not like a, like a uh, an Ash or a Varus, where he has the utility baked into his kit. Like he's pure damage and mobility. So if you can't do damage, he's he just kind of tickles people. Gotcha. I guess um, maybe yeah. I need to learn better. Like because I I know I I knew I pushed the wave in. So I was like I, I guess maybe I was like oh I have a I have I have time to like get all this stuff done. But then like getting better at like knowing exactly when like my timer is up kind of yeah like a uh, sense of urgency because the, the timer got kind of extended like the the initial rotation was just fine like you you do have a, a small timer but then once it started going long then it like it bleeds into the next play because the waves are gotcha. 30 second intervals so like the first like say 15 seconds was fine but then the, the next 15 seconds causes you to lose the next timing gotcha so yeah and this whole sequence kind of got a little sloppy here and it, yeah. this is where the AD carry game starts to stall out where um, if you're, you're you're basically falling behind curve because of how chaotic the game has been and it's, it's hard to hit your item spikes on a reasonable amount of time if the game stalls out too hard like this.
Um, so this wave is all good. I like the word. One thing I'd say against Nunu is the word as deep as possible because it gives you more time to snowball, see the snowball coming. Um, mm -hmm. So like, because right here you could probably, I mean, with the where the wave is, you don't have much more time. Like you got to go back immediately. But in general, um, like I would try to get a ward like kind of by Dragon Pit, like kind of covering that whole entrance. That way you can see preemptively, so there's more time to react to his rolling. There's a, lot, a couple of champs like that, like uh, like Hecarim is another one like that, where there's champions that have wall jumps and there's champions that are really fast. And the champions that have wall jumps, that's a perfect word because you know they can just jump the wall right over from the right side and then he's there. But the champions that are really fast usually don't have wall jumps. So like I think Ramus is another one. These champions, like that's where you want to, it's kind of just like a general trend to acknowledge like, okay, what what, is, what are their jungles gank roots? Like if you're like Nunu, Hecarim, Ramus, those champions, they're really fast, no jump. Then you want the deeper ward where you can see them running from a place because you need the time to react where because they can just blow past your wards and, and get you anyway. But then the champions like, uh, say like a Nidalee, which is kind of slow, but can hop all over the place. That's where you want the more shallow wards that cover the immediate bushes and stuff. Okay, that makes sense. And you got to be on high alert for the Ash Arrows because she may try to reaction check you. It's like she sh shouldn't try to go for the Ezreal. She should probably go for Zyra, but you got to respect the reaction tests where they just go for you anyway and make you outplay it. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Tower is just kind of useless here. It's kind of hard for you. Oh, nice. Nice. That's huge. Oh, That's huge. Okay, so let's play let's play through this one more time just from start to finish. I think one okay. thing to consider is the way uh, it's kinda yeah, the wave's in a really bad spot here. When you see Triss clearing this and going through river, you just kinda have to play careful. Right here they give it away and you start running immediately. But I would say maybe don't stop an alt right there, because you, your priority needs to be to just get out ASAP. Because like the odds of you turning a kill are really low. So you gotta prioritize your own life. But it works out really really well where they kind of leave the Zyra at 1 HP and then she flashes away and then she Triss goes for you and you manage to trade back while they're chasing for the Zyra finish. So, and you got your Triforce gold off, like that's huge. So this is a, a really clutch defense where you're going to be able to hit your item spike and you manage to trade kills on their gank. Yeah, and Shaco tanks this. <laughs> yeah, we really, really Perfect. lucky. One thing you could do here is if, you're, if you think they're in lane, you could just blue them out now that you're level 9 with your blue trinket up. If you, if you just want that information, um, doing? you could either blue trinket them in lane or you could blue trinket in their jungle if you like think that. Yeah, so you might have seen this coming if you had blue trinket them a little faster. Should be gotcha. fine, but oh, nice turn. Good stuff. Well, it worked out just fine for you, so no big deal. But uh, yeah, just as uh, one thing about the blue trinkets is since they last forever until they hit them, it's a good idea to just uh, keep it going off cooldown. Unless you don't have anywhere good to put it. Like say you just plop one in the bush near Nunu's blue buff. And then that'll it'll last there until somebody goes and clears it out. And it, you're, it'll be back ticking for the next one coming soon. Okay. This is a pretty huge tower break. Getting that kill plus the uh, the turret break should get you pretty much all, uh, just short man immune. But still pretty solid nonetheless. And uh, I think uh, you're like slightly accelerated now too. Because you got like... Your farm has been pretty good for these last couple timings.